Hello and welcome to All Things Marvelous. I'm John Paul and today we are going to be making this in Blender in Geometry Nodes. It's a little bit more of a complicated setup, but there is a helpful set of group nodes um, that we're going to be using, which you can grab from for free from an account called Bradley Animations. Um, if you, I'll put the link to the to it in the description. Um, if you go to this site here and download the necessary ones for your version of Blender, um, we should be able to get going. And also, if you can go and give. Bradley Animation, a bit of a like, that would be brilliant as well, because um, it's a very, it's a really great channel. It's got some really good information um, and some great techniques to get things going really fast and quick. This is a bit more of an advanced tutorial, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along with the information I'm giving you and the extra nodes, group node setup should help sort of show you visually um, how things are working and make it a little easier to get some great animation so let's get into it so the first thing we are going to do is we need to, to append the groups the group geometry nodes into the file so once you've downloaded your um, file from the website you'll be able to come into the blender file like this and if you go to node tree you'll see all of the various nodes that we need to bring into the system so if we select them all and click append that should bring it into our file the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete the cube and we are going to then put in a mesh plane just so we've got something similar to the geometry node setup we're going to use we're going to open a new window there we go and we're going to move to the geometry node editor and if we select the plane We'll click on new and that will give us a new geometry nodes setup. So the first thing we need to do with this is we need to bring in a grid um, to replace the plane. So what we're going to do is go to mesh primitives and bring grid and we can plug that in. Um, and as you can see, it's replaced it. And we'll, we'll bring that up to two. So it's the same as what we had initially. In fact, no, let's bring this up to six, six meters. You do that by dragging your left mouse button over the two values and that will allow you to change them both together. So once we've got a grid set up, this is when we get into the first bit of the group nodes that we've appended into the file. If you click shift and A, it will bring up this menu and you should be able, when you go to group, you should see all the different ones that start with G um, lined up there and they're also searchable within the um, geometry node setup so the first thing we're going to have we need is a, a displace so we're going to take a normal displace and we're going to plug that in and then we're going to take what is known as a proximity fall off and what this is going to do um, if you select proximity fall off from the search menu and if we change this to wireframe mode it should give us a better understanding of what's going on and if we click the fall off into the displacement and then bring the scale up to about seven okay and if we come in the mesh, we're going to change the vert vertices so we get a lot more geometry. We'll leave it about 45. Let's put it up to 50 for now. And you can see what's going on. So you should be able to see straight away that using these group nodes that we have gives us some great control over the geometry um, with some really easy settings to be able to make fall offs like that, change the minimum and the maximum. Um, and it gives you some really just easy and quick control if you look into these you can see that this is all the math in the background which is making it happen um, but with these all set up it means we can iterate faster and make some really complex animations so the next thing we're going to do with this thing is we're going to distribute some points 
So we're going to come to um, I have to just type in distribute and we get distribute points on faces and that will change our geometry to have points instead. Okay, so now that we've um, made that field and made that um, proximity fall off, what we need to do is we need to set the position of these so that we can rotate them around the axis. And we can do this with a set position node. So if we come to set position like this, and what you can see is I can move the whole thing left, right, and along all its axes. But what we really need to want, want to do is we want to control just this middle area. So if I go back to this and you see this here, what we want to do is we want to make these go around each other like that. Um, and we're going to do that again with a fall off proximity group node. Okay, so we need um, another proximity fall off and then we need a combine Euler, I think it is. And that is for the rotation. And then the way that we tell it which bits we want it to actually affect, initially we're going to need a position. So we take the position, and then we're going to use vector math to firstly take the initial position and then add. We're going to take the two top values and put in one. Actually, we're going to put in 1.8 and the bottom value we're going to put in 1. Ultimately, what that's going to do is that's going to affect only a certain area of the geometry. We're going to take the vector from that and plug it into the proximity fall off. We're going to take the fall off and put it just in the Z channel. And then we're going to take the rotation into uh, finally into the position of the set position but we also need another vector rotate and what we need to do is give it initial position and then the adjusted position that we're working with uh, we need to change this to Euler and give it the rotation and then once we're clicking the vector into the position, nothing changes um, until you come down to this setting here, which is the max setting. And you should be able to see, we should be able to see, I should say, it moving. So one quick thing to change is we need to change this to multiply, not add. So we change that to multiply. And what we should see is if we turn the max on the proximity, we get our whirlwind effect happening to the points. Okay, now that we've got that set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a empty into the scene. So shift and A, and we need an empty. And from this empty, because both of these proximity fall offs can be controlled by the empty, we're going to use that in our proximity information. So we have our points and they are turning in a sort of tornado fashion. We then need to instance some points and add some leaves. So the next thing we're going to do is going to say instance on points. So we can select instance on points. There we go. And we're going to I'm going to bring in some leaves that I made in a separate project. Um, you can use anything you want. I will include the blender file so you can have all of the final render and what it looks like um, to play around with yourself. So I'm just going to quickly append. There we go. 
with the plane selected what I'm going to do is if you come up to the collection and just drag and drop the collection into the geometry nodes editor you should be given the collection info and you can plug that into the instance a couple of things you need to do is change it to separate children and reset children um, and that will give us a ton of load of leaves the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make them a little bit smaller why are they all on top of each other ah we press pick instance there we go and now we've got separated leaves but as you can see they're all along one plane and if I was to animate this you can see sort of doing what we want but we need to add some movement within the leaves themselves we're going to add an animation into this so we're gonna have on the proximity fall off we're gonna actually put this up to 1000 and we're gonna on frame one press I and that will turn yellow and give us a keyframe on the first frame and on the last frame we're gonna put in I think 4000 and we're gonna click I again and if we press play you can see that that gives us a nice tornado style um, animation on the leaves there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to give them some bit of movement and a bit of a noise texture, but we only want to affect the cone within the middle. So we have to take the same coordinates and the same theory, which is the proximity fall off um, and affect only the rotation of the ones within that area so what we're going to do is we can take all of this and we can duplicate and we'll take the position again for the input of the vector like that um, and we can change all of these values down to I think we'll add them to about put it to one and what we need to do is we need to then take the output of this an effect because this is basically telling us just to use this cone area and to affect just this area here you can use the normal noise if you want but I like to use the grouped noise just to give me a little bit more control so it's the group noise 3d there and um, we need to also add in another vector rotate so I'm select vector rotate there and again switch this to Euler um, and then if we move those over there a little what we should be able to do is you take this rotation and plug it into the main vector and plug in the noise factor into the rotation and then put them all into the rotation of the instance on points and already you can see that we've started to get a bit of noise within that area if I press play you can see it's sort of doing what we wanted to do but we could probably make it a little bit better um, what we can do is we can bring the frequency up a little bit maybe to about one like that um, maybe the roughness down a little bit bit of distortion as well like that and maybe bring the scale down a little maybe 0.7 something like that press play again that's given us the fluttering we want and then the next thing we want to do is to give us that conical shape that you get within a whirlwind because we, these two things are controlled by the empty if we click on the empty and just move it back slightly you'll see just about there you'll see when we press play the bits around the outside are going faster with the smaller say central bit like that and it gives us a very nice more realistic animation maybe we just tweak a few more of these things bring the frequency down a little bit to about one and the detail down to about one um, and the distortion actually put that about 0.15 there we go and that's a bit more like what we have in the actual animation Of course you can change 
various things with this we can change the base setup using this to give us some more leaves if we want and the density to increase how many is in the swirl like that so there we go hopefully you found that useful i do suggest going through the bradley animation channel because he has a lot more explanation to all of the other functionalities of these group nodes please like and subscribe and i will catch you on the next video